All right, real quickie, because I really got to go to bed. It's 3 o'clock, but this is uh, what he did. So basically, he has a different infill percentage for each of these. No, he doesn't. They're just solid objects. What he does is that these are all separate individual pieces. So if you go up here to mesh and go separate connected surfaces, you'll notice all of a sudden you got a whole crap load of stuff in here now. See? All these different ones called split. We'll see how that one is the 80%. Well, now I can say, okay, info percentage split two, and I can make a process here and tell it go select models, select none, infill split two, hit OK, and come in here to infill and make it 80%. Okay, then I could come into um, just find the next one. Okay, so let's go down. Okay, there's 10%. So split seven is ten percent. So I can go to add, select all, deselect all, split. What was it? Seven, I think it was. Split seven, infill, ten percent. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. Okay, there's a hundred percent. So that is split ten. So add a process, select model, select none split 10, infill 100%. Let's find the next one. There's 50%, split 11 is 50%, add process, select model, select none, I think it was 11, split 11, infill 50%. Okay, let's just do that for now. So prepare to print, select all. We're going to do continuous printing layer by layer. Now it's only going to do the ones that I made processes for, but as you can see, as I turn these down, they have different amounts of infill. Because I created, these are all actually separate objects. And I created a separate process for each of those objects and told it to do that one 50%, that one 80%, etc. You would do the same thing for the one with perimeters and you would do the same thing for the one for different layer heights. Each of those three vases would be a separate object that you could do a mesh separate connected parts and then you could do this, create separate processes. But as you can see, it took this long just to do four of them. So it's a, it's a pretty involved process because you have all these, these different chunks and you'd have to do you know, your different infill for each of these chunks as you found each chunk. So there's 50, there's 100, there's 10, there's 80, 80. Now where's the rest? There's 100, there's 50. There's none. There's 5%, there's 30%. There's the base, there's 20%. So there's all of them. Okay. So you'd have to go through here and find each one. So again, 20% would be split 31. And you'd have to create a separate process for each and every single piece here. And then you'd also have to create a process for all those little pieces. So all the, the little O and the none, the little O and the percent symbols is all separate little pieces. You'd have to collect all those and put them in a, a process by themselves. and Otherwise you'd have missing pieces. But yeah, that's how he's doing that. As far as how to do that in any other program, I don't think they can. Um, I don't know how to at least. Um, does any other program able to do multi-process? I'm not sure. If it could do multi-process, it can do this. You would just go your equivalent of separate connected surfaces, which would give you these individual... Pe oh, there's an easy way to do it. I can click on it. So 10% is 7, 20% is 31, 100% is 10, 80% uh, is 2, 50% is number 11, 30% is number 27, none is number 20. The base is thankfully all one piece, it's 29, but that's how you'd, you'd create a process for each of those pieces. And set your parameters and infill, but then instead of running it sequentially, you'd run it um, continuously and you'd have to be very careful not to move any of these parts, otherwise when it prints, it's going to be off. But that's how he's doing that.